I started my journey in 2002. Um, I formed the um, foundation and um, serving kids with physical disabilities. Um, and we take the kids out to the um, outdoors and we teach them what they can do and they overcome what they can't do. So everything was going really well. And in 2008, I knew I had to make a bigger difference. And I didn't know what that difference was going to be until May of 2009. I um, found myself sitting in Yosemite Valley looking straight up at El Capitan in Yosemite. And like all the time before, I never thought anything of it. But out of the blue, it dawned on me that that's what I had to do. And I said to myself, that doesn't look that, that bad. <laughs> and that's what they do. So I, me I meandered my way back to the campfire. And there happened to be a bunch of climbers that, there at the time. And I asked a bunch, a bunch, bunch of them what it would take for me to climb El Cap. <laughs> they said, well, first of all, you have to learn how to climb. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> I'll learn how to climb. Second thing, you got to get back into shape. So I said, okay. I can do that too. So I went home and um, I hesitated to uh, tell my wife because my wife has a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, if I tell you, you can't tell anyone for three months. I said, really? <laughs> I begged her, do not tell anyone for three months. And she said, okay, okay. So mentally, I had to get my head around the enormity of what I was going to do. I, I got back in the gym. I worked out for three months. And at the time of the campfire, three months before, the guy that I was talking to said that mentally, you can never get to where you're going to go. I said, okay, I didn't know anything about climbing. I didn't know anything about being, hang, or hanging 2,000 feet off the ground. So, I mentally prepared. I went to my wife after three months and I said, okay, you can tell everybody. <laughs> and it's one thing to say that you're gonna climb El Cap, it's another thing to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so for the next 15 months, I trained and then I trained I engineered the climbing apparatus that I climbed El Cap in. And I was in the gym five hours a day, six days a week, doing 3,000 pull-ups a day until the very end of my training. I started my climb on September 12th, 2010. And yeah, and jumped in with all 
both be end, ended my climb six days later, getting to the top. And now we've got a small little video. My dream is to inspire kids to achieve what they want in life. My husband has waited his whole life. He didn't know that he was going to be able to do anything like this. This came to him, this epiphany came to him and he realized he could do something athletic. But not only was it athletic, it was as big as it gets. El Cap to the normal climbers. Um, probably the pinnacle in a lot of people's climbing career, you know? People come from all around the world because it's kind of the proving grounds. No one with more kind of physical challenges has ever even attempted to climb it. You're, you're looking up at you know, almost an unachievable wall to surmount. I've climbed plenty with able-bodied climbers, but it just seems like the disabled guy has to overcome the same obstacles as well as other diverse ones. He's getting about anywhere from two to six inches of pull per pull-up, and if you do the math, that's just inspiring. <laughs> I hadn't met Steve before, but I, had, I was pretty well briefed on his condition, and uh, personally we just sort of you know, who is this guy, what's he doing? I put in a 10% success rate, probably 90% failure. A California man is on his way to becoming the first person with cerebral palsy to climb Yosemite's El Capitan. Two or three days into the trip, he looked at Dave and I and said, you know, this is the longest I've been out of my wheelchair ever. You have this road that's not going to change. I don't care if you're mad about it. I don't care if you're sad about it. You're missing out on life. Thank you.